In this video, I'm going to make a crosscut sled for my table saw. It features an expandable clamp system running on aluminum tracks, and I'm designing it with a box joint jig edition in mind, which will be covered in a later video. Table saws come in all sizes, with different size tops and miter slots. However, no matter what size you've got, you can design a sled for it. This jig is made to fit my small saw specifically, however you can pretty easily accommodate this design to work with any model you've got. For this project I'm going to be using half inch Baltic birch plywood. It's a very stable and even wood, and great for this use. I'm also going to need 1 8 inch, 3 quarter inch angled aluminum for the tracks. Let's start with cutting up the wood. You'll need one of cut A, the main board, measuring 18 by 14 inches. And all of these measurements will be listed in metric as well in the description. You'll need two of cut B, measuring 17 by 3 and a quarter inches, and these are the runners for underneath. Now, it's important that these fit really snugly so there's no wiggle room. I ended up cutting them just a hair above and then sanding them down to make sure they fit perfectly. You'll need four of cut C, measuring 18 by 3 and a quarter inches. These will be glued together and make up the fences. One fence for the front and one for the back. And I'm using my prototype sled here to cut the wood to size. You'll need four of cut D, measuring 3 and a quarter by 2 and a half inches. These will be glued together and provide support on the sides. Also, for the clamp rack, you'll need one of cut E measuring 10 and 15 16 by 1 and 3 quarter inches for the clamp bar, two of cut F measuring 3 and a quarter by 3 and a quarter inches for the knob, these will be glued together, and two of cut G measuring 2 by 2 inches for the wood holder, and these will also be glued together. In terms of hardware, you'll need a couple of different sizes of screws, one and a quarter inch, one inch and three quarter inch, as well as a three and a half inch long 5 16 inch bolt, matching 5 16 inch nuts, and a variety of bits. The first step in assembling is gluing the parts we need to double in thickness. So that means cut C, cut D, cut F, and cut G. It's important to be really careful, especially when gluing the fence and the side support, to line up the pieces perfectly so everything is absolutely straight. While the glue is drying, let's work on the metal. You'll need the following cuts of the angled aluminum. Two at 18 inches and two at one and three quarter inches. I'm cutting using the bandsaw with a fine tooth blade, however you could always use a hacksaw. To remove any sharp edges, I'm using a Dremel. In anticipation for the box joint jig, find the center on the glued up sides, cut D, and drill a 3 8 inch hole in the center. Now let's pre-drill the fence. Take one of the sides, mark it out on the end of the glued up fence, and drill two holes so the pieces can attach later. Next, let's prepare the metal. Put the aluminum in a vise and mark out six holes across the piece with an awl. The metal will be screwed into the fence and you can see here that it will be situated rather high up. So make sure your holes are on the lower side of the metal. Once the holes are marked, pre-sync the holes with a large bit and make sure to not go all the way down. Next, drill all the way through with an appropriate bit for your 1 inch screws. Now, let's pre-drill the fence to fit the metal. First, I need a couple of spacers so the track doesn't bite too hard. I found that putting on three pieces of masking tape works really well. So you place this one down as a spacer so the other piece can ride a little higher. Then I secure, squeeze them tight, make sure they line up on the sides, mark the holes, and pre-drill. Then repeat on the other piece. So these are all the pieces that we have pre-drilled at this point. Now let's go back to the table saw. First, let's find the center on the main board. Then let's find the center on the table saw. Now we put in the runners. 
make sure the edges are flush. Okay, so let's line up the center of the board with the center of the table saw. Make sure those lines match up. And I'm using a framing square here to make sure it's all square, because it's extremely important that everything lines up properly and nothing is out of square. Once everything is in position, attach the board to the runners. Once you have a screw attached on each side, draw a line in between, countersink and pre-drill, and screw in the 3 quarter inch screws. Make sure everything is pre-sunk well, you don't want any exposed screws. Once the runners are attached to the board, let's mark down where the fence will go in the front. Now the position here is determined by the sides, so mark out the position and use a framing square to line everything up. Also carry the lines around the back and mark them on the underside. Now countersink and pre-drill the middle of your lines and make sure to not put a screw in the middle where the blade will go. Next turn the piece up using the back fence as support as well and screw down the front fence. Make sure to not over tighten, use a screwdriver to finish up by hand. Once all the screws are in, remove them, then put down some glue, put it in place again and screw it down, making sure to find the same screw holes. Make sure the pre-drilled holes for the aluminum is pointing inwards on the fence. So I decided to glue the front fence down here just to give it more rigidity and more support, especially for later as I add the box joint jig. Then mark out the hole on the side pieces, glue that in place as well. Clamp and check so everything is square. If it looks good, screw in place. Now you can turn the whole thing around, countersink and pre-drill and attach the sides from underneath as well. Attach the back fence as well, countersinking, pre-drilling and screwing in. I didn't glue this piece in place because it won't be under the same stress. Make sure this pre-drilled holes for the aluminum is pointing inwards. Now it's time to attach the aluminum. Line each piece up with the right fence, since the holes will be slightly different. Make sure to find the holes and screw it in place. Give the piece a good sanding with fine sandpaper. Also, it's a good idea to finish it. I put on some wipe on poly, and I will put on several more coats, since I'll be keeping my jig outside. Now let's move on to the clamp. Using the glued up piece F, mark the center. Next draw a circle of appropriate size using a compass and use angle bisecting if you'd like an octagon shape. Mark out the head of the 5 16th inch bolt and drill a 5 16th inch hole. Next chisel out the space for the head and you can go deeper to sink it in more. Cut the octagon to size and repeat the steps on the smaller glued up piece G, marking and chiseling out the hole for the 5 16th inch nut. Also, drill a hole and chisel out a space for the nut in cut E, the bar, 1 and 5 8 inches from one end. Then mix an epoxy and glue the bolt in the knob, the nut in the holder and the nut in the bar. Now using the small aluminum pieces, countersink and drill two holes on each side and line up on the end of the bar, the edge flush with the wood. Mark pre-drill and screw it into the wood. Repeat on the other side and try it out on the track. Very nice. If it is attached too tight though, you can always loosen the screws a little. Then screw down the knob and make sure the nut is at the bottom of the bar. Once that's in, screw in the holder and the clamp is ready. Now it's time to set it up on the table saw and make the first cut. Make sure everything is in place and cut the jig down the middle. I'm raising the blade a little at a time and it's working very nice. I designed this jig with the surrounding table in mind, so there's a block for the runners to stop them. If you don't have a block, then it would be a good idea to set one up, or to be mindful of that so you don't push the jig too far off the tracks. Also, use this jig at your own risk. The blade is exposed in the front when you do a cut. I may cover this area at some point, however, I'm not sure. Right now I'm working on the box joint jig, which will be located in that space, and which I will cover in a future video. 
Overall, this dig works really well. The clamping system can be moved to wherever you need it, and it's really nice to use when cutting smaller pieces in particular. You could also make additional clips using the same design for even more grip if you want to. So there you have it. A table saw crosscut sled with aluminum tracks and a clamp. Built for my small table saw, but certainly easy to adjust to fit whatever size your model is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for weekly projects. And if you'd like to check out my Patreon page, here's a link. Also, if you'd like to take a look in my shop, you can find that here, and these links are also available in the description. I put up videos every week, so here are a couple others you might enjoy.